From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Friday, September 8th, 2023. How Chinese hackers stole a Microsoft signing key. Now for these details, how the Chinese-linked Storm 0558 threat group obtained a MSA key. The attackers used this key in recent exchange online and Azure Active Directory breaches. This came from a cascade of failures. The MSA key leaked after a crash dump occurred on a consumer signing system. The dump should not have contained the key, but it got added due to a race condition. The crash dump eventually moved to Microsoft's internet-connected debugging environment. When the storm threat actors compromised a Microsoft engineer's corporate account, it discovered the key in the crash dump. The ICC to prosecute cyber war crimes. Last month in the publication Foreign Policy, International Criminal Court lead prosecutor Karim Khan said his office will investigate and prosecute cybercrimes for acts such as war crimes, genocide, and crimes against humanity. The announcement in the publication didn't get much press notice at the time, but Khan's office told Wired that this is now the office's official stance. In the piece, Khan also mentioned that disinformation remained a separate area of concern for the prosecution as a gray zone tactic between war and peace. North Korean cyber attacks against Russian targets. This finding comes from a new report from Microsoft. There's not a lot of details in the report. There is no word, for example, on specific victims or even ties to specific threat groups, no mention of Lazarus, for example. These attacks occurred in March 2023, targeting Russian diplomats and an aerospace research institute. Microsoft said this appears to be a crime of opportunity to seize intelligence with Russia embroiled in its war with Ukraine. This finding comes as part of an overall report on cyber espionage activity and capabilities in East Asia. China broadens iPhone ban. Bloomberg sources say the Chinese government began expanding its ban on iPhones. Several agencies reportedly started telling staff to not bring the devices to work. More formal restrictions are reportedly in progress, which would see the phones restricted across state-owned enterprises and other areas with government oversight iPhones retain significant market share in the country, but increasingly come into conflict with government objectives to lessen dependence on American-owned technology. And now, a word from our sponsor, Comcast. DataBee from Comcast Technology Solutions is a cloud-native security, risk, and compliance data fabric platform that transforms your security data chaos into connected outcomes. Built by security professionals for security professionals, DataBee makes your data a goldmine, rich with information that enables you to examine the past, react to the present, and protect the future of your business. Learn more at Comcast slash DataBee. That's C-O-M-C-A dot S-T slash DataBee. Lockbit hits Seville. Local media reports that the City Council of Seville, Spain, attributed a recent ransomware attack to Lockbit. It says it will not pay a reported $1.5 million ransom. The attack began on September 4th and impacted the response of emergency services and tax collection. The city does not know if Lockbit exfiltrated any data in the attack. Lockbit has not yet posted any information from the attack on Seville in its leak site as of this recording. Android patches actively exploited Zero Day. The September 2023 Android security update patched a high-severity zero-day vulnerability discovered in the Android framework. This opens the door to privilege escalation without user interaction. In its advisory, Google said it discovered signs of limited targeted exploitation. The patch fixes the flaw on Android 11 and newer versions of Android. Older versions remain vulnerable. As with most Android updates, Pixel owners receive these updates immediately, while other OEMs need to validate the update for their hardware. Aviation organization hacked by multiple groups. CISA issued a joint advisory with the FBI and Cyber Command's Cyber National Mission Force, warning that several threat groups tied to different nation-states gained network access to an aeronautical sector organization involved in the broader aviation sector. This began at least as far back as January 18th. Attackers gained access through a vulnerability in Zoho Manage Engine Service Desk Plus and used disabled credentials into a Fortinet VPN service, so there were two avenues in. A lack of proper network segmentation and overall lax organization on the victim's network meant CISA cannot determine what information the attackers exfiltrated. CISA's incident response team worked with the victim from February through April to respond to the multiple breaches. Flipper Zero can launch Bluetooth spam attacks. The Flipper Zero has made a name for itself as a versatile network and mobility pen testing tool. 
The security researcher known as Tech Riptic found another use, sending Bluetooth spam on iOS. The researcher sent spoofed advertising packets over Bluetooth Low Energy, seemingly to transfer a number, connect an AirTag, or set up a new iPhone. These are used prominently across iOS for these types of transfers. They also claim that sending a high enough volume of these spoofed notifications could severely disrupt the iOS UI. This functionality requires a custom firmware update to enable Bluetooth and a settings file. Tech Riptic claims this technique works even on phones in airplane mode. Later today, we have a fantastic new Week in Review show ready to help you kick off the weekend. I'll be talking with Village MD CISO Dan Walsh going over the biggest news of the week and getting his perspective on what it means to the larger security community. Plus, you can join in our live chat to share your perspective and even ask a question or two. It all starts at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, so be sure to head on over to our events page at CISOseries.com to find out more or just subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified when we're going live. I hope to see you there. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.